you know, you're 12 years old and you're living with your moms and your moms are struggling because she didn't think that life was really going to work out like this for her and she doesn't have a man around and the men that are around haven't always been that great. Sexual abuse is becoming kind of normal for you and you think that other people don't have secrets that are as bad as you and maybe you've tried to talk to somebody at school and they haven't really heard you or maybe they just haven't had time to listen to you. And so you're seeing these girls on, on the videos and they're so pretty and they're so sexy. And, and so your way at 12 of escaping into this fantasy world is to think about what it must be like to be one of these girls. And you know that adult men already look at you and you wonder how you can kind of use that. I was just a child and that's how I was supposed to live, like a child and like an adult. So one day you're coming out of school and there's a guy outside in a Cadillac and he's, he's nice looking. I mean, he's, he's got the baseball cap and the jeans and the Tims. And he tells you how pretty you are and you know how pretty your hair looks. And it's been a while since anybody even really noticed anything about you. And for the first time, you feel like somebody's really interested in you. Because now all of a sudden, he's asking you about your dreams and your hopes and where your father's at. And he says that he can be a daddy to you. The people that I shouldn't have depend on, I'm depending on for support, for support, for support. And so that night he takes you to a club and he puts you up on the stage and he gives you a few drinks and there's men throwing dollars at you. And it's scary, but all the time you're just looking at his face in the back of the room and he's like, you know, go ahead, baby girl, go ahead. You're doing it for daddy. And you're feeling proud because nobody's ever said that to you. And so then that night he tells you that there's more stuff that you've got to do. And he takes you into a room and there's a man there and he tells you to strip and you think this is something you'll never do. And yet, there's a part of you that already knew how to do this because that's what your stepfather's been doing to you all these years before. And so you turn that trick and it's like a part of you has died inside. And so you come out of the club that night and you get in the car and you know he's pumping 50 cent and he takes you to McDonald's and he tells you, you did a good job tonight, sweetie. And he's stuffing his pockets with the $1,000 that he made. And right now, you're happy. The people that I shouldn't have depend on, I was depending on for support, for support. like this is the best that it's ever gonna get and everything else in your life has prepared you for this moment or the sexual abuse or, or the neglect or the drama or the pain or the trauma has prepared you for tonight where you stepped across a line that you always thought you'd never really quite step across and you don't realize that night what it will be like to be on the track and get raped and you don't realize that daddy isn't really gonna protect you you don't realize what it's like to have a gun held to your head that night. You don't realize what it's going to be like when you catch your first STD. You don't realize what it's going to be like when you first come home and daddy beats you for the first time because you didn't make enough money. You don't know what it's going to be like to have cops offer to trade sex with you in exchange for not being arrested. And then sometimes you'll do that and they'll still lock you up anyway. You don't know what it's like to sit up in jail and know that you just made 1500 for your pimp last night, but he won't come down and put $200 bail on just to get you out a few days early. You don't know what it's like to, to walk down the street at 6 o'clock in the morning when you're just getting off work and people are starting their day and they see you and they know what you do. And they look at you in a way that you just don't feel like you belong in that world anymore. And you don't know what it's like to feel like you've lost part of yourself along the way and to feel like you'll never leave. And no matter how many times you try to leave, he'll always find you and catch you. But that night, all you care about is the fact you're riding in a Cadillac and you eat at McDonald's and you're listening to 50 and you got this one man who you really think loves you sitting right by your side.